We find Local 10 News reporter Alex Finney. Alex, what are the conditions out there? All right, guys. Yeah, I want to show you a picture of just first the waves that we are seeing out here at Juno Beach. This is where we have been for the entire day since yesterday, bringing you different vantage points here. As you can see, those waves have just continued to grow. It's such an indicator of just the powerful system that we have been dealing with over the past few days, Hurricane Dorian. And just uh, beyond those waves, you can see people still kind of hanging around here, taking photos. It seems as though that a lot of people actually have moved off the beach. As a matter of fact, this is actually better than it was a few hours ago. People actually closer to the water taking those photos. Of course, that is not advised. That is why this area is under a mandatory evacuation because of just that. I want to take you over this way, however. Juno Beach, we're also right by the pier, and we had a lot of people a little bit earlier. They were actually heading down the pier which has been closed for the past several days. And because of that, look at how, how far out that pier extends. We had people at about that second awning over there. Uh, because this storm is so powerful, that is so dangerous. And that is what police have been advising people not to do. Because people were not heeding the warnings and following that direction, they put back up this police tape, obviously letting people know that this is a danger not to cross in this area. We've been seeing those the wind and the rain bands coming through. And as I am talking to you right Right now we are getting another band, another batch of that rain that uh, that just almost it feels like almost like a cold rain coming off uh, right now. I want to go back over to the waves because giving you an idea of just how big these waves are about six to 10 feet right now. We are feeling wind gusts at about 33 miles per hour. So just really, really indicative of just how these conditions have continued to deteriorate over just the last few hours. Uh, we had a bit of a peak of sunshine a little bit earlier. That did not last for long. We are now back dealing with the uh, constant deteriorating conditions. I want you to take a listen to uh, a couple that we spoke with not too long ago. My biggest question has been out here, why are people coming out when they know that we are dealing with such a dangerous storm like this? Take a listen. I've never been through really a storm this big before. So and that, that's a little uneasy, yeah, right? The waves are really big and the storm is probably going to be bad. Okay, well, that was not the sound that I wanted you to hear. We'll hear from the couple a little bit earlier, but that was little Ava. She is eight years old. Uh, this is her first storm that she has experienced uh, like this. Obviously, very, very dangerous. She was out here with her dad. They have since, from my understanding, gone home to get to a safe location, and, and that is exactly what officials want people to do at this point. Uh, I'm going to take you back around here to where we were just kind of giving you an idea. This is kind of where people have been congregating as that rain is starting to come down. Um, we, of course, are continuing to monitor the situation out here. Again, this area under a mandatory evacuation, uh, that is because it is obviously so close to the water. Uh, people are being advised to go inland. Obviously, those shelters find themselves a safe place to go because even though this is a slow moving storm, they don't want people to be fooled by just how slow it is because it is such a dangerous storm as well, carrying with it quite a system. So that is why we are advising people not to be out here because we are seeing those bands come in. And when those bands come in, they come in with such ferocity that you want to make sure that you are keeping keeping yourself and, of course, your family protected. Calvin and Nicole, back to you. And, uh, Alex, how does it compare to yesterday in terms of those bands coming in? Uh, shorter time span in between them, uh, a larger time span in between those bands coming in, or just about the same? That's a really good question, Calvin. So I would say it's about a shorter time span. They're coming in, um, it, it, it's, it's heavier. Uh, it's the, the wind is is rougher. Uh, obviously, you can tell by just the currents that we're experiencing here uh, in the water. You can see those waves. If we can come back around here, I don't think we can because it's difficult for us to maneuver. But those waves are crashing so close uh, to the stair steps that we use to get down to the beach. It was not doing that yesterday. You can tell by how far inland that that sea foam is right now. There's actually a bunch of debris down there uh, uh, by the uh, by the the beach. So all of those signs are indications that things obviously are worsening and it's just going to continue to be that way. Of course, as the day continues on and as Hurricane Dorian moves closer. Alex, do you find as the waves get bigger, so to speak, more people are coming out to watch? 
as the waves are getting bigger and more people coming out to watch. You know, honestly, Nicole, to be totally honest with you, people have been coming out, whether the waves were big like they were yesterday, whether they're, they're growing bigger like they are today. It seems as though there's been a steady stream of people coming out because they want those pictures, right? Let me ask this lady right here. So you're out here. Why are you out here? Obviously, you know that we're dealing with such a dangerous storm. Yes, just to see the ocean. Yeah, just to see the ocean. Right. And would you say... And, and the people, you know. Do you feel nervous at all? I no. mean, not, not at, at all. all. What's your plan of safety? Because you know this is a mandatory evacuation zone. Um, well, we don't live in this area. <laughs> we live in Palm Beach Gardens. You live in Palm Beach so Gardens. Live inland. Okay, so how was it driving in though? Because like we've been saying, those wind bands, of course. There's some puddles of standing water, but other than that, it's fine. Okay. Traffic as usual. All right. Cautiously, but traffic as usual. Cautiously. Yeah. We are ready to bail out. You're ready to bail out if you need to. We're ready, we're ready to bug out. Okay. Well, that's the thing is the storm is moving in and yeah. it, will, it will be too late to bail out. And that is something that officials have been saying. Your time to get a plan in place was yesterday and all the days yeah. before leading up to the storm. So you want to make sure you have yourself and you find yourself in a safe location. Alex, as you said, people coming in to take the pictures and just to see the situation, but ready to bail out if necessary. I'm sure you find that to be the case all along the beach, all along the pier, and with officials there as well. You still see police there, authorities, making sure that everybody's still safe. Yes, there have been authorities here, and I'm looking around right now because I don't see any police cars at this exact moment. They could be positioned in other areas around the pier at this point, but... Oh, I sorry. Excuse me. I heard some people screaming. I thought something was going on, but um, they are probably positioned at other points around the pier. But again, they are urging people. Police have been urging people all day since yesterday, obviously not to be in this area. All right, Alex, thank you. We'll check back in with you in just a little bit. And right now, parts of Florida are feeling Dorian's impact. The storm is forecast to track over or near the coast. So let's go now to local 10 news reporter Terrell Fournay. He joins us live from Satellite Beach. Terrell. Nicole and Calvin, good afternoon. These waves are getting bigger and bigger. Literally just about a minute ago, we saw the first wave crashing up against this dune that separates us from the sand and the shoreline. That wave crashed so high that it nearly topped the dune itself. So uh, these waves are definitely getting bigger and bigger, but What's been consistent all morning long and for the early part of the afternoon is just the rolling waves getting closer and closer. Uh, you know, people see awe in this. They basically have been coming out. They've been taking photos of the waves and just how high things have been. Take a look behind me over here. You can see just how the, uh, the trees have been swaying in the background as well. So you can get a sense of just how high uh, or how much, I should say, uh, this wind has been going. Uh, but this is the condition. I know that the Brevard County Emergency Management Office has uh, just tweeted out a message urging all residents here uh, to heed the evacuation warnings. Uh, they want people to evacuate and they want people to heed that mandatory evacuation evacuation order that is in store for this area. They're telling people that, of course, the causeways are not going to be shut down. That is not their protocol when a storm like this rolls in. But if you are perhaps driving across that causeway and a huge gust of wind perhaps overturns your vehicle, you are on your own because even the first responders have to hunker down when the worst of the storm uh, rose through. Uh, we just saw a power truck uh, an electricity truck, a power company uh, truck just roll in uh, as well. So, you know, we've been driving around uh, Central Florida for uh, about the day, last day or so, and we have seen these uh, power crew companies in mass, in, in, in uh, convoys, in a sense, uh, staging at different parts of the city. Uh, this is FPNL right here. Uh, it looks like that they were about to do some work on a power pole that is here at Satellite Beach. So we're seeing this uh, in real time. There are a few people walking just underneath uh, this power uh, pole that is set up with a uh, generator right there. You see the guy waving in the background. So uh, this is what they're doing. We can only assume at this point that they are doing some work ahead of the windy conditions that are anticipated for this area. Uh, the wind gusts are expected to be between 60 and 80 miles per hour. Uh, this is tropical storm force winds. 
but that storm surge is expected to be the biggest threat between three and seven feet of storm surge expected to literally inundate this uh, central Florida coastline. Nicole Terrell, Calvin. Terrell, you've been out there for a couple of hours now. I've been watching your reports. Talk to us about the windy conditions, the gusty conditions you're feeling and what you're seeing in the ocean, how it's gotten progressively worse or, or what, how do you think it's been over the last few hours? Yeah, the wind has been very consistent, but the waves, we've noticed the waves uh, get worse as the afternoon has progressed. Um, just at the end of this shoreline, you're looking at the shoreline right now, uh, but there is a uh, stairway that is uh, just to the right of it. Uh, the stairway actually leads down to the sand, and at one point you could not walk completely down that stairway to get to the bottom of the sand just because of uh, the waves were coming so far on shore. Uh, of course, because of this bad weather, you, you get uh, people out here doing very dangerous things on the surfboard. This is something that obviously uh, should not be happening, and the storm is something that you should not be taking lightly. So uh, they're putting their own lives at, at risk, and um, you know that's something that emergency managers, they don't want to see. But we want to focus on telling people the important information that is obviously evacuate if you're under the uh, those evacuation orders um, the people that we've been speaking with who have been at a safe distance behind me here at the park on dry land those are the people who have been taking the photos from a safe distance uh, just again in awe of what mother nature is showing them uh, from these outer bands of hurricane dorian we haven't seen any rain in a while but at one point earlier today the rain was on again and then it was off again so that part uh, has not been as consistent as uh, this breezy weather uh, but for the folks here, we've been, you know, talking to multiple people throughout the day. They've been telling us that for the most part, most of the people who call the coastal communities home have evacuated. But for the people who you still see here, a lot of them say that they have no plans to evacuate. Their livelihoods are here. Their businesses are here. Their homes are here. So they plan to retreat in their homes uh, when the conditions really get bad. But that's something that emergency managers obviously strongly urge against. They say it's a mandatory evacuation order, but they're not strongly enforcing that, at least through Brevard County. Terrell, we're going to let you go and regroup. We'll talk to you in a little bit later on. But officials continue to warn people not to do those things, not to get into the water like that.